Hello all, Liu here, and today we'll be discovering 7 things I wish I knew earlier about Python Fast API. So if you're not familiar with Python Fast API, it's a small framework that allows you to easily make Python backend applications. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm a software engineer from Singapore and I make tutorials and practice questions relating to Python and programming. Now back to the video. Number 1. We can actually make a whole backend app in one .py file. And here's how we do it. So if you haven't already, we have to pip install fast API and let's also install uvcon which is the thing that allows us to run fast API. So for me, I've already installed it, that's why it looks like this. And here, from fast API, import fast API and app is equals to fast API, open and close bracket. And here, we are going to create our first endpoint, so add app.get and we use get because we want to make this a get request and we pass in a slash so this is our endpoint so define let's say home and return and let's say message is home so here notice that i can simply return a normal dictionary and here let's run it so import uvcon and uvcon dot run and we pass in app so let's run this and let's see what happens and here we will get this stuff. And notice that our cursor is here, which means that it's waiting for us to do stuff. So first things first, let's head over to our app using our browser. So here, notice the 127.0.0.1. We can also replace that with localhost. So here, I'm going to type localhost 8000. And if I run this, I'm going to get message home. So this message home is from our endpoint over here. So let's say ABCDFG and let's rerun this. And if we refresh this, we are going to get home ABCDEFG, which is from our endpoint over here. So here, if we add a test 1 to 3 and let's rerun this and let's refresh this, it's going to be not found because we have just changed our endpoint to test 1 to 3. So once again, we add slash test one two three and we will get home a b c d e f g so here notice that whatever get request we make on our browser is going to appear here so here let's stop our app from running Control c and clear number two the docs endpoint so here i'm going to create this so let's move this up here so home let's create more of these endpoints so let's have test one and this is going to be test one. So let's create one more. So let's say test two and we are going to have test two. So let's run this Python a.py and this is going to run. And if we come here, so if you go to slash, we'll get home. And if we go to test one, we will get test one. And if we go to test two, we will get test two. However, if we go to docs, we are going to get to a Swagger UI. So here, this Swagger UI will contain all of our endpoints for us to test easily. So here, I can try it out and execute. And I'm going to get message home. And similarly, here, when I click try it out, I can execute it. And I'm going to get test one. And finally here, if I try it out and execute, I'm going to get message test two. So this is very useful in our development process as we do not have to keep writing other code in order to test our endpoints. Number three, host request and pydentic. So here let's write app.get nothing and define home and we return, let's say one to two. And let's run this. So here we use app.get which means that this is a get request. And if we come here, we can call it using our browser. However, if we change this to a post request, we can no longer test this easily using our browser because when we call it directly in our browser, we are actually doing a get request. So here, let's create a post endpoint. Let's say test. And when we post stuff, we usually have data. So I'm going to create my payload and it's going to be type my payload. And here, I'm going to move this down. So status is OK and my payload is my payload dot dict open and close bracket and here 
let's define the my payload class. So from pi then dig import base model and class my payload inherit from base model. And here we can define what goes into my payload. So here let's say we have name which is a string. We have h, which is an integer, and we have, let's say, email, which is another string. So here, the purpose of this Pydentic is to ensure that our payload will definitely have a name, a h, and an email, and that their data types are all correct. So let's rerun this, and let's go to localhost 8000 docs. And here, when we try it out, we will be asked to enter a name, a h, and an email. So let's say name is Tom. Uh, age is 40 and email is hi at haha.com So if we execute this, this will work because all of our data in our payload, which is this thing, are correct. And we will simply get status OK and my payload is equals to name, age and email. However, let's say we remove email and let's execute this. And here we are going to get an unprocessable entity. And this is because we are missing the email. So over here, we stated that we must have an email, which means that this will be enforced over here. So let's say we pass in an email and we pass in something else. So gender is male. So here, if we execute this with an additional gender, notice that gender is ignored. So here, our my payload class, which inherits from Pydentic base model, will actually enforce that the data types here are followed. Number four, sending files or images through fast API. So here, let's create a app dot post. So slash upload, and let's define upload. And here we have files is a list of upload file. So here we have to import upload file, and we import it from fast API. And next, we print files before returning status OK. So let's run this. And let's go on to docs. And here, we click on this and try it out. So we have to choose file. And let's say I'm going to choose 4.png. And let's add another one. So let's say 3.png. And I'm going to execute. And here, I'm going to have status OK. And here, notice that I've printed my upload files. So we are going to have 4.png and 3.png. So at this point, we can do whatever we want with our uploaded files here, such as uploading to S3 or so on. Number five, URL parameters versus query parameters. So here, I'm going to give you an example of a URL parameter. So here, HTTP localhost 8000 slash get slash tom slash 40. So this is a URL parameter. And next, we have an example of a query parameter. So HTTP localhost, let's say 8000, slash get question mark name is equals to Tom and H is equals to 40. So this is going to be our query parameters. So here, notice that we use slashes in a URL parameter, but we use a question mark and a key value pair kind of syntax in query parameters. So here both are useful and let's figure out how to use them in fast API. So here I'm going to start with URL parameters. So app get, let's say get, and after get, I'm going to have name. So open and close brace name, and afterwards open and close brace h. So define test, so I'm going to have name is string and h is integer. So I'm going to return name and h and status is OK. So let's run this. And next, let's move on to our docs. And here we have get name h. So let's try it out. So let's say name is Tom and h is 40 and let's execute. And here we are going to get name is Tom, h is 40 and status is OK. And notice that our URL is going to be localhost 8000 slash get slash tom slash 40. So these are our URL parameters. And next, let's create another one. So add add.get. So let's say get to. 
And here we want to use query parameters, so we do not do any of this. So define test two. Name is stir and age is integer. And let's move this down here too. So control C to stop it and let's rerun this. And here we have get two. So when we try it out, let's say name is team and age is 50. And if we execute this, we'll get name is team, age is 50, and status is okay. However, if you take a look at our URL, we are gonna have get to, and then we have a question mark. Name is equals to team and H is equals to 50. So here, these are two pretty different methods of adding parameters to our get request that you need to take note of. Number six, background task in fast API. So let's say apart from your normal endpoint stuff, you want to run some sort of script every few seconds. And so this is where background task will come into play. So here we import async io, which we do not need to install. And here async define periodic. So I'm just going to call it periodic first. And while true, let's print hello. And await async io dot sleep. And let's make it sleep for every two seconds. And next, after defining this function, we have to schedule this function to run in the background. So here, at sign app dot on event, and our event is going to be startup. So this will run the moment our app startups. So here is sync define schedule periodic, and here loop is equals to async io get event loop, and loop create pass periodic. Open and close bracket. And so if we run this, we are going to get hello, 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 and so on. So here, notice that hello runs every two seconds, and this is because of our periodic function. So let's stop this, control C, and let's make this slightly more meaningful. So let's say x is equals to 1. And here, while true, x 0 plus equals to 1. And we print x is now x0. And we do this every 2 seconds. So let's run this. So x is now 2, x is now 3, x is now 4, x is now 5, and so on. So let's stop this. And let's add an endpoint that we can call. So add app.get x. So define get x and we return x is going to be x0 and let's run this so here x is now 2 x is now 3 x is now 4 and so on so let's go on to our swagger ui and here we have get x so let's try it out execute so now x is now 8 and if we execute once again it should be around 10 and if again we should get 11 and so on so here, whatever you write here, it's going to run in the background every 2 seconds. Number 7, multiple routers in fast API. So for smaller hobby projects like this, we can use a single PY file. However, once our project gets larger and larger, we probably need to organize it better. And we can do that using multiple routers. So here I'm going to create another b.py. And let's put it side by side. And here, app.get and we define home and return message is going to be home and let's say we create another new router here so from fast api import api router and here i have my router is equals to api router and here i'm going to give it a prefix prefix is equals to test and here my router dot get hello and define hello and we return hello and let's create another endpoint and let's call this hi so this one will be hi and so after defining this we need to ensure that a.py can read it so we do it here so from b import my router and now we need to register it so app.include router my router and so if we run this and let's go to swagger Notice that all our endpoints will be there. So this is from a.py and the bottom two are from b.py. 
So in v.py, notice that our prefix is test. And here, test will appear before all of our hello and hi in v.py. So next, let's create another c.py and let's do the same thing. So let's call this Lala. And this is hello from c.py. And this is hi from c.py. And similarly, from c import my c router. And let's change this to my c router. And also, we need to include my C router. So let's close this and let's rerun it. And let's go to Swagger. And right now, we are going to have this from A, this from B.py, and this from C.py. So here, this API router class and this include router function becomes pretty useful when you need to deal with a lot of different files in Fast API. So once again, thanks for watching, and hopefully, this was clear and easy to understand. See you in the next one.